Tomato aspect, tomato, tuna aspect, nope. Tuna, tomato aspect, tuna, tomato salad, tuna, tomato aspect, tomato. Today on Shana Shows You Stuff, we are gonna make a tuna tomato aspic. This recipe is from my grandmother's cookbook. Uh, she saved it, so I'm gonna guess that it's really good. Let's get at it. Our first step is to dissolve our unflavored gelatin into a quarter cup of cold water. I'm just gonna pour the water into a larger container. And we're just gonna sprinkle our gelatin on top. The whole package. And now we're gonna set that aside. And we're gonna measure out two cups of tomato juice. Just your regular old tomato juice. And we're gonna heat this on the stove. Once you have your two cups measured, we're gonna go put that on the stove to warm up. I'm just gonna set mine on medium and just keep an eye on it. As you can see, our gelatin is setting up. I'm just gonna give it a little stir. And once our gelatin is all mixed up, we are going to add quarter teaspoon of monosodium glutamate. So I'm gonna use it, you don't have to. If you don't want to, you can use a quarter of the amount of salt. Or you can just leave it out because we're also going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt, so. I'm gonna add the monosodium glutamate or MSG. You don't have to, oops. And we're gonna add one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I can't believe it is taking me this long to get to a tomato aspect. I love tomato aspects. This happens to be a recipe from my grandmother's cookbook. Um, she didn't write it, she clipped it, but it, there aren't very many clipped recipes, so I know this is probably gonna be really good. And that MSG is gonna just give a little bit of umami in addition to the saltiness. It's absolutely fine to leave it out. All right, once you've got that all mixed, we're gonna put a quarter of it into a mold. And we have to prep our jelly mold, and I have a standard Tupperware jelly mold. It comes with flowers, and a Christmas tree, and a heart, and a star. So I think I'm gonna do the star. Just snap that right on the bottom. You want to make sure it's tight. Now, the recipe says to use the oil from the sard or the tuna, because we're going to put tuna in this, the oil from the tuna to lubricate the inside of your mold before you add your gelatin. I don't have oiled tuna. I actually have tuna in water. So I'm just going to take a little bit of vegetable oil and just kind of brush it around inside of my mold, because we do want to get a really good release. There we go, just make sure to get the whole thing nice and lubricated so that your jello gelatin comes out nicely. We're gonna take and pour about a quarter, maybe up to a half, a good little amount anyway, there we go, into our mold and we are gonna let that sit till firm, almost firm actually. And the remaining amount of tomato gelatin is going to go in the fridge and set till it's about the consistency of an egg white. Cover my jello up and I'm going to put these in the fridge and I'll come back in a little bit. So <laughs> I would like to ignore my mistakes and pretend they didn't happen, but I make mistakes all the time. So here we are. I forgot to add the lemon juice. So I'm just going to dump this right back in. Luckily, I remembered it right away, and we're gonna add two teaspoons of lemon juice into our mixture. It's really important, it's gonna add some extra flavor, and I don't want to mess this recipe up, because Jello takes a while to set. All right, so we're just gonna pour about a quarter back into the bottom of our mold. That looks good. And now these are gonna go back in the fridge again to set up and the bottom is gonna set up 
stay until it's set almost done. And the extra is going to come out when it's about the consistency of an egg white. See you back. And our tomato jelly is at the right consistency. As you can see, it is kind of held up, but not completely firm. Sort of like the white of an egg. Chill until almost firm. Chill remaining gelatin mixture until consistency of an unbeaten egg white. So there you have it guys. And the reason is because we want to suspend stuff inside of this part of the jelly. Next we need to chop up a cucumber. And now that our cucumber is chopped up, we are going to dump it into our tomato jelly. And we're gonna add half a teaspoon of capers. It didn't say to chop the capers, so I have left them whole. And now we're gonna add one can of drained flaked tuna. It says it's flaked, but these are kind of big flakes. And I'm just gonna dump that all in. The bottom portion of the jelly, or the tomato jelly that is in the mold is still in the fridge and setting up. So that'll be nice and hard by the time we're done this. All right, let's give this a stir and get everything incorporated. I'm gonna be honest, it looks disgusting. But this is a vintage recipe and I find a lot of their jelly recipes also looked disgusting. Okay, let's go get the mold and add this to it. Now, because this was thinner when it was poured, it should have set up better than the main part. And look, it is quite set up. So we are just gonna spoon this in on top of our jelly. I am going, so what I'm gonna do, I don't wanna dent this pretty little layer of just clear tomato um, tomato aspect. So I'm just gonna kind of pour it on top of my spoon or spatula and just let it slide on to the jelly. Now that I've got a good layer going, make sure we get all that in there. Take your spatula and kind of smooth it out. And there we have it. We're going to seal this up again and let it sit until it's completely firm. I think it would be a good idea to do this either really early in the morning or the day before. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, I'm going to lay the lettuce around this way. Let our plate on top, and then we're just going to gently flip it over. Now, we need to let the air out, so you're going to just take off the top. Just gently, see how it popped right down? That's the air releasing the mold. And let's go. There we go. <laughs> you can see the tomato, the top part held really well. I think the bottom part needed to sit maybe, maybe another hour. And I'm gonna put it back in here actually uh, to firm up and then I'm gonna try it again tomorrow and see if it's a little bit better when it's more firm. So let's come back and see tomorrow. Okay, it's day two. Let's hope this is finally set up properly. It's not as smooth and pretty as it once was, but that's okay. So I'm gonna layer the leaves around the top because I still want that pretty green contrast. And layering it like this will, will help it transfer to the plate. And I'm just gonna invert my serving platter the whole thing upside down. Because it was loosened already, I don't have to redo the pop. It just kind of falls down. And 
It's still, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, leave it long enough. As you can see, it still has some better ridges now. But <laughs> this is, this is not pretty. This is, is not pretty. Let's try it. I am hoping that because it's set, it's going to taste better. I don't know. I'm going to have to have another one. <laughs> All right, here we go. I don't think I'm used to eating savory jello or gelatin because this isn't jello. It's gelatin. Um, this would be nice with something, I'm sure, but I don't know what. It has tuna in it. You don't need to add anything else. It's a nice on a hot day as an accompaniment, but I can't say that I recommend this and I'm surprised because I do like a tomato aspic. So, Grandma, you didn't get this one right. <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna try again, maybe. I just feel like I'm missing something. Like it, I sh it should taste good. Meh. It's just, it's meh. It's meh. So, if you want to intrigue your guests and, and have them wondering what is wrong with you, I highly suggest you make this. It is pretty if you don't mess it up like I did. But, uh, but overall, this is a fail for me. <laughs> All right, what else can we make with Jell-O? Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.